Next tonight, the story of one man's long battle to change the law in favour of disabled travellers. Yes, Doug Pawley from Weatherby has won a victory in the Supreme Court five years after he was unable to board a bus because a woman refused to move her buggy from a priority wheelchair space. Well, now drivers will be required to do more to prevent people blocking wheelchair spaces, but they won't have a legal right to physically move them. So, did the ruling go far enough? In a moment, we'll speak to Doug's lawyer about how the ruling will be enforced. First, Charlotte Leeming has the story. Leaving the Supreme Court to cheers and applause after a five-year legal battle, Doug Pawley's face says it all. A win for him and all disabled people wanting to catch the bus. His fight for the right to travel started in 2012. Doug couldn't get on a bus from Weatherby to Leeds because a mother with a pushchair wouldn't move. He was left on the curbside feeling frustrated and humiliated and decided enough was enough. It's great that after five years of fighting and campaigning by so many people that we've got a ruling that shows that disabled people do have the right to catch a bus and that the bus company must make all reasonable efforts to make that possible. We accept Mr Pawley's case. The court decided bus company first group's policy of requesting but not requiring able-bodied passengers to move isn't effective enough. This disability group in Leeds welcomed today's ruling. Each person in this room has experienced what Doug went through on public transport. What I'd want to see is the wheelchair and the buggy going on the bus. I can't get out of this wheelchair. I can't. There's no other choice. So, you know, it's like it should be my priority, but I stress only when it's required. Doug's always insisted this case isn't about wheelchairs against buggies and the parents we spoke to today welcome the ruling. I don't have any problems, like if it's a wheelchair, well it's a priority, I will move, I'll come out of the bus, which I see is a priority for me, so like we can wait. I would actually like wait and let the disabled person go first, because I always think of this, I always put them first before me and my son. Doug Pawley has made history today with this landmark legal ruling. But although it may lead to a significant cultural change, it's still a partial victory. Basically, bus drivers are being told they must do more to force able-bodied passengers out of the wheelchair space. But they do not have the legal power to remove them. So it still very much relies on the goodwill of passengers. That could lead to some very difficult situations for drivers. Charlotte Lee Ming, BBC Look North. Leaks. So Doug's lawyer, Chris Fry, joins us now from London. So I put it to you, Chris. Yes, I can see reason for celebration, but also, isn't it a fudge, this? No, it isn't. I mean, it's substantial progress made in this decision. I mean, we've now established the Pauli principle, which is that disabled passengers have effective and enforceable rights for priority over a wheelchair space. But who and believe it or that? not, for five years, we've had to fight to establish this principle. OK, so well, we accept that you've done that, pleased. but the people who are going to enforce it are the drivers, aren't they? They're the, they're the ones who are having to make this judgment. Don't you think that's a little bit too much pressure on them? No, not at all. I mean, the drivers, the drivers are routinely asked to engage in managing situations on buses. So we heard evidence from bus drivers in this case that they would throw somebody off for eating a kebab. They would throw somebody off a bus for smoking. They would throw somebody off for antisocial behavior. So what this judgment does is say, well, actually, you should treat just as seriously somebody refusing to move following a reasonable instruction from a driver. Uh, you know, you should, you should take just as seriously the rights of a wheelchair user to access the service in the same way as you do in those policies. Um, and it doesn't even go as far as that. What Doug, Doug didn't ask for somebody to be kicked off a bus. He asked for somebody, for, for the policy to be changed so that drivers moved people okay, on the bus. Okay, so uh, how will this ruling, in your opinion, change things overnight, perhaps, for bus companies? Well, how, how quickly bus companies react is obviously a matter for them. But, I mean, clearly, from a legal perspective, uh, any passenger that now is refused access because of this request and retreat policy that was in place before can now can now enforce their li rights legally. So if a bus company, if Doug tomorrow gets on a bus and is refused access because the driver doesn't require someone to fold the 
buggy, then Doug's entitled to damages, and so are every other disabled service user trying to access that service. So it's a matter for first whether they change that policy or any other bus company across the country. But if they don't, they're going to find it's going to be a very expensive problem for them to sort. And at the end of the day, this isn't really about the financial position. This is about what's morally right. You know, the I'll accessible have to, I'll transport. Have to hurry now. Just make your final point, please. Accessible transport is an important part of an inclusive society. And what Doug has done is not just for his benefit, but it's for the benefit of others. Simply trying to use a means of public transport okay, to get around. Okay, we've got the message. Sorry, I have to cut you off. We've overrun on that. Chris Fry, thank you very much indeed for joining us.